tighten those belts. How does that sound? I'm not sure. I'm not sure, Ayanda. I don't know. I, those belts, are they're making us blue in the face right now. They're so tight. <laughs> How's it going there? I believe you're joined by the First Lady. And I have commented on how amazing she looks. She's absolutely incredible. And the amount of weight she lost is phenomenal. A very good morning to you, Leanne. Yeah, it's a very interesting analogy that you make there about belt tightening. It's very important that this event happens on a Monday. As you know, usually people want to start their diet on a Monday because they feel so remorseful of all the junk food they had over the weekend. But you know how it goes, Leanne. By Friday, uh, that uh, resolution is done and dusted and we're back to our old eating habits. So it's very difficult, A, to lose weight, B, to keep it off. But yes, I'm joined by the First Lady, Utobega Matiba Zuma, and she's here on behalf of her family. Foundation and you have commented on how gorgeous she looks but what is even amaze more amazing for me is that she not only lost 30 kilograms but she's maintained it she's kept it off for two and a half going to three years which is a feat in and of itself a very good morning to you and welcome uh, good morning to you Ayanda and our viewers at home with the busy lifestyle that you have how in the world do you keep 30 kilograms off well, it, it depends why you even have to shed the 30 kilos. For me, it was because of my health and adding more years to my life and life to my years. And I think if you do it for the health reasons, you then are bound to co remain committed to actually keep it off. And it is a combination of things. First of all, you say I'm busy, I'm hectic. We all are busy. Life is a balancing act. What is important is to create time for everything and to prioritize. And for me, it was one of my priorities to ensure that I find time to exercise and to keep active, to eat healthy, to ensure that I don't do all those things that are gonna place my life at risk and also of putting the, the weight back on. And I always advise people that, you know, when you want to do it, do it the healthy way. Go to the doctor or the clinic, ask for medical advice as to how to, to go about losing weight, but also that they provide you medically because you may have medical conditions that you're not aware of. And once you go to the clinic or you go to the doctor, they'll be able to check and say, this is the best way to go about losing the weight and you remain committed. Mm. Is it something that ordinary South Africans can do? Say perhaps I'm living in a snake park in Soweto and I'm thinking, gosh, where do I begin if I want to be healthy? Yes, my dear, I think we today, for instance, being the National Healthy Lifestyles Day, it's a day when we call on all South Africans to say we need to keep active, regardless of where you are geographically in our country. Our government now has begun and rolling out, started rolling out um, a, a program whereby they build safe places, environments where our people can exercise, even in the townships. And I know that in case that and our MEC for sports and recreation has started doing so. And I've, I'm, I'm, I'm about to meet with her in one of these days to embrace that program and to say, you know, this is part of what we stand for and what we advocate for, for our people to keep fit, to ensure that they eat healthy. Mm. You have taken this beyond the personal. It's not just about you being healthy now. You are calling on business to get involved do you calling on uh, ordinary society, civil society, government to get involved as far as legislation is concerned? You have made this the focus of your foundation. Tell us a little bit about how you go about raising that awareness and what you plan to do. My plan is um, first is based on the premise that we cannot solve the problem of obesity. It's not the problem of the government. We all as a collective need to actually come together, work together as a collective to respond to the challenge posed by obesity because obesity is now, we're seeing it on children and we need to do something as a country to ensure that we, we're actually on the alarming levels now of obesity. So we call on, on the private sector to say, private sector, you need a healthy workforce. You need a healthy clientele, so you need to play your part as well by giving back, by ensuring that you keep a healthy workforce that exercises, that creates time to exercise and have workshops on how to remain healthy. But also, you know, everywhere in our country, we work very closely with the Department of Health and other departments to say we want to help you, we want to help the government of the day to ensure that we have responsible citizens, not citizens that are just going to live their lives anyhow and say, I have the government being the custodian of the people, they're going to take 
take care of me when I you know, need dialysis. We need to, very, to strengthen prevention because prevention is better than cure. And for us, it actually is a financial burden, economic burden in our country if we were to manage these diseases, your cancer, your diabetes, your cardiovascular. And all these diseases are lifestyle diseases. And it's time that we call on our citizens to say you need to ensure that what you eat, poor diets, are a major contributing factor to these diseases that I've just mentioned. But also go for screening and sure that you know that you know where you stand where your health is concerned and prioritize it because we keep on putting on, on the last of the list of priorities mm. to say I'm gonna do my pap smear and then the year goes by mm. and before you know it you are then sick and it, it becomes a burden to the state mm. as well. Mm. I loved what you said uh, you know off air when we were chatting preparing for this interview mm. that you know even the, the advertising of your tobacco products of your alcohol um, and 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 the, the presence of alcohol outlets in universities perhaps that were sending subliminal messages about health in our country. Absolutely, my dear. I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, the conversation we had is something that is in my heart to say, you know, as a country, we need to stop, st uh, stop reflect, mm -hmm. you know, take stock of where we're going as a country. Are we investing in our youth if we are able to have taverns mm -hmm. in the universities, if we have to have misleading advertising? So we, need, we call on industry to say, industry, yes, we may advertise, but responsibly. Mm -hmm. You can't put big billboards in our townships. Why does it say as a country? Is it, does it say that we're a drinking nation? Why does it say if you glorify smoking where there's no benefit in smoking? And those are all the things that are placing the lives of our people west of all the youth. Right now, Ayanda, we've got two billion of the youth population in the globe. But what do we do with that youth? Are we investing, reinvesting in ensuring that they stay healthy, they are responsible, you know, people that we invest in to ensure that they take the baton forward because their struggle is not going to be the same as ours. And the struggle that we are faced with now is not the same as the struggle of the women that marched to the union buildings. So we need to ensure that we, you know, galvanize every effort and every South African to say, be away. These are the dangers. Advertise industry, but responsibly. We cannot have our people being misled by our marketing messages that we see out there. And I mean, the industry needs to now stop putting profits before the lives of our people. They need to be responsible in their way of making profits. So I, 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 I rally strongly behind the Minister of Health when he does this. I know that he gets criticized from left to right, but I am behind him to say, Minister of Health, Mr. Mutzoledi, he knows what he's talking about, and I know too, because I've, I've seen it in the global platform where people change the way they do things. Mm. And I can, I can sense the passion with which you speak about these issues, but I want to talk now about the psychosocial effect of a healthy lifestyle. Eating healthy, exercising has got a great mental effect as well. Now, your family has been, I'd imagine, through a lot of stress of late because of uh, the job that your husband is involved in. It has been very tumultuous, I think, for a couple of months now. What role does a healthy lifestyle and, and being in a good frame of mind for you uh, play in that stress alleviation? It does reduce the stress level significantly, my dear, because once you, are, you eat healthy, healthy, you can, you know, your body, your mind, your soul, everything is in balance. And, you know, it just helps you to face, you know, any challenge without really being in a panic mode or anything of that sort. So if you exercise as well, you start your day, you know, feeling lighter than you felt probably when you went to bed the, the, the previous evening. So it is very important if my husband as well, he does exercise because he needs it. It's a very stressful job that he does and people don't tend to appreciate that as South Africans. I always say, you know, it's a thankless job, but I appreciate the work that he does and I respect him as our leader. So with me, being in the right frame of mind, I'm able to provide the necessary support that he needs in order for him to fulfill his duties, his executive duties in our country. Thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure chatting to you. First Lady Tomega Madiba Zuma just speaking to us about uh, the effects of a healthy lifestyle. And, you know, it's, it's, it's absolutely critical that we do some serious introspection, some serious soul searching when it comes to our general health and well-being as individuals, but also as a society. More of these discussions in just a moment. Stay with us.